Pascal, the quick move on Harris. Sidestep by Spurs in a slam dunk. The Montreal special with a slam dunk. All right, Javon, let's head to the line Raptor style. First topic, Kim Birch. He's averaging 11.5 points on 59% shooting, 7.9 rebounds, 1.2 blocks, and just under a steal in 30 minutes a game since April 14th. Is Kem Birch a legitimate NBA starting center? V, he has to be in consideration for not just, you know, any team starting spot, but definitely for this Raptors team going forward. When you look at the style that they play, like he's everything that they need. He came in and he's a guy that just runs the court. Um, and, you know, in the half court, in the pick and roll sets, he's a guy that dives to the basket. And I think, you know, something as simple as that impacts the game so much, especially for a team that wants to shoot the three, wants to shoot the three ball. You know, guys are getting sprayouts, getting kickouts. And like Kyle Lowry said, like, guys are finding him. He's, you know, shooting 60% from the floor, essentially. Um, and, and, yeah, Kyle, Kyle said it himself, just trying to get him paid. Um, but, no, I, you know, that impact offensively has, has been, you know, we've seen that. The impact he's had there. Uh, the, the Raptors' offensive efficiency has definitely gone up since he's been a part of this club. On the defensive end, he's a guy that, you know, is a presence at the rim. Just as much as he is on the perimeter pick and roll play, you know, he can interchange. He has good lateral movement. His impact is both offensive and defensive. Is he going to be, a, you know, an Embiid stopper, uh, Anthony Davis stopper? No. But, you know, he, he does a lot for this team. And I think for the foreseeable future, he's definitely the starting five, the starting center for this Raptors team, unless you're going to get, a, you know, a definite stud or a 20 and 10 guy. Yeah, no, I'm with you there, Javon. I think if you can get that 20 and 10 guy in the offseason, by all means, then you think about having Ken Birch in a backup role, having a 20, 10 guy in a starting role. You know, you start to think about the depth that the Raptors have had at the center position over the years, whether it was Serge and Mark together or even Serge and JV before that. Ideally, if you can really stack up that position, I think it suits this team. But for now, you have to love what Ken Birch is giving you defensively. Like even the other day when they were playing the Lakers, we saw him switch on to LeBron James for a couple of possessions. Obviously, LeBron's not LeBron right now, but it's still fun to see that he has that switchability. Now, topping number two, Pascal Siakam. All right. Last eight games, 22.1 points, 7.5 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 1.6 steals. He's shooting 39% from three. Is Pascal back? I'll say this. Pascal, we don't know what back is, right? You know, Pascal's been in the league for, what is it, five years now. The last two years, he's played really well, signed a big contract. So there's been these, you know, exceptional um, expectations of him. The reality is, he's over his career, he's only a guy that's averaged 14 points. He's still a work in progress, and we're going to continue to see that. But what I appreciate right now is the fact that Pascal is just finally playing loose. He's enjoying, you know, playing basketball. He's getting back to just doing what he does well, using his athleticism, using his length, getting out in transition, um, using, you know, he's a bigger wing, uh, posting up guys. And now he's, he's, he's starting to flow on the perimeter. He's obviously, you know, he's shooting well, like you said. So I, I think, you know, a big part of that was the expectation that he put on himself. Now there's not as much pressure at this point in the season. And again, I think Raptors fans have also been spoiled with the, with the you know, the type of wings, the caliber wings that they've had here, the Kawhis, the DeMars, um, you know, the Vince Carters. But if you measure Pascal by his, the growth and his, you know, his ceiling and where he's come from and not his salary and the expectation that you're putting on him, you'll see that you do really have a good player and he's going to continue to grow. That's the key there. You've got a really, really good two-way player. For me, when I look at the areas where he's developed this season, that mid-range shooting between 10 feet to that three-point line, that's improved by almost 10%. That's huge when you're trying to develop an overall package. The other thing I look at is the playmaking now, I think some of that was hurt by who was at the center position before, but since Kim Birch and Freddie Gillespie have come on, you're really seeing the way the floor is spread for him, the way he's making decisions out of a double team. I think all of that bodes well for Pascal Siakam potentially being back on an all-NBA team in 2021-22. And you know, one thing that we're forgetting, he's getting to the free throw line the most he's got, to, got there in his career. That just goes to show the level of aggression and that, that shift in mentality. So like you said, you you couple that with the fact that he's you know now becoming more of a creator, um, and adding to his offensive package that he is. There's definitely a high ceiling there. Now to finish off, Nick Nurse after the loss to the Clippers said that the Wizards game is their last chance saloon. 
are they still in the race for the playing tournament or is it too little too late i would love to say that they're going to be in the playing tournament i'd love for them to be in a playoff position because then we me, you and i would be here you know talking a lot more raptors basketball for you know a lot longer but you know i think it's a little too late uh the fact that you know your fate is out of your is out of essentially out of your control because you can you could win out right now but at the same time you're relying on indiana um and washington a team that's probably the hottest team outside of the new york knicks in, in the nba right now so it's it's a, you know it's an uphill battle and then i think the elephant in the room is that we still don't know are the raptors making this push for this playoff this play in position um and we've seen it guys have been you know resting on night you know back-to-back -back nights uh, in and out of the lineup, and and everybody seems to be a bit confused as to what's going on. At this point in the season, I don't think you have the luxury um, to be really be doing that, if, especially if you're making that push. You have to have that sense of urgency. I'm with you on all that. I think Washington, as hot as they are, they are going to be tough to catch, but I thought it was interesting to note that Nick Nurse said, hey, that might not be the only team we can catch. You think about the Indiana Pacers. We're, we're hearing some rumors about tension in the locker room with Nate Bjorkren. I'm looking at their schedule to finish the season. They've got their final four games against Philly, Milwaukee, the Lakers, and then that last game up against the Toronto Raptors. So who knows? Maybe the Washington Wizards aren't just the only team to watch out for here. Either way, that game is going to be huge in deciding where the Raptors will finish for the season. Thanks for watching.